Okay guys, this uh, video is going to be covering a video extraction, um, taking the movie and get, getting the movie out of the uh, disc just so you can play back the movie through MPC or VLC or put it onto a burnable. Um, a lot of people have uh, issues with uh, making an ISO with SliceOff when they mount the ISO and they put it into their burner program or their extraction program. It it doesn't come out working right, or they get a black screen, or the chapters are mixed up, or whatever. This is going to show you how to do it when any DVD has not dealt with the protection yet. So you don't need to use any type of purchase software. You can use open source software. So I'll show you the open source method, which is the free method. So what we're going to do is you're going to want to put the disk in, rip your image. If it has screen pass, when you have a slice soft enabled, you're going to get a black screen or you're going to get mixed up chapters. If that happens to you, you're going to want to uh, use your purchase license player and the process monitor method to find the correct playlist. And the movie that we're, we're going to be dealing with is called Movie X today. It has Screen Pass and Dolby Atmos. So we're going to show you how to do the extraction with that type of movie. This would work with all movies, by the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, select our... Uh, our drive and we come up with uh, our movie this is actually named a different movie and we're gonna right click it and mount it to the RJ the mount program I use is called virtual clone drive which you can get off of SliceOft install it is the most stable version it's, it's way better than any other program out there and uh, I suggest using this we're gonna create a folder called movie X now that that program's been mounted, we're going to load up our free software called AVCHD Coder. I showed you how to set this up in a previous video. And we're going to load up a program called TS Muxer. Now that that's loaded, we need to find the file. Press the Add button. Scroll down to our mounted movie. Select the BDM folder. Go to the playlist folder and find our correct playlist. Now with this movie, it's playlist 302, which came back from detecting the screen pass. Open it up. You're going to see this list. Now let's explain this section here real quick. This is the MPLS file. There's, it could be hundreds of them. How, how the screen pass works is it takes these files the M2TS files and it scrambles them. So this one could become this one, this one could become this one. So you end up with a movie that's scrambled, that won't play at all, that'll play a copy protect message. And if you don't find the correct playlist, if any DVD HD hasn't, hasn't uh, fixed the problem yet, you're gonna end up with a movie that's gonna become a coaster because it's not gonna play right. It's gonna be in the wrong order. So once you find a correct one, the first file here is the video file. You can leave that alone. The second file is the True HD. This has Dolby Atmos, this movie, and AC3 core. If the movie has Dolby Atmos, I suggest, uh, let's talk a little quick about this real quick. If you have lab filters in MPC, it will pa pass the Dolby Atmos track into your amp. Um, problem with lab filters, I find they jitter my video and my audio. So I don't use them. I use FD Show Codex. It's covered in the previous videos. And if you want to use the FD Show Setup, you need to press this button here. Select this. If it has Dolby Atmos, you need to down convert to 660 AC3. This is still, still going to give you a 6.1 channel like you would normally get with DTS. Um, you're not going to notice any difference by, by selecting that. If you want to keep the Dolby Atmos and you have an amp that's able to play it, then you're going to not check that, but just be aware that if you try to play this in the MPC player, it could give you issues. Audio might not line up with the video. The video might be jittering. The video might start playing the first couple frames and stop. This solves it, okay? So you can do what you want, but that's what I do. The next track is the commentary, commentary or French. It could be Spanish, German, whatever. We, I speak English, so I'm not going to need these. This is commentary, and this is commentary. Scroll down. PGS are your subtitle tracks. I always keep the English, all the English ones, and get rid of all the other languages. 
The reason why I do this is because some movies have four subtitles, and you need to have these tracks to pull the four subtitle subtitle track uh, out of the subtitle. Now this movie doesn't have them, but I still always demux the subtitle tracks just in case. Okay, so there we're done. We're done our selection. We're gonna select Blu-ray disc. This is gonna create a Blu-ray structure. So when you're done, you can take the files. Make an ISO, burn them to a CD or a Blu-ray disc, and put them in a player. Just be aware that Screen Pass uh, might be defeated by this, but the CIVIX protection will transfer through the audio and still give you problems. So just be aware of that it hasn't been dealt with. And um, this isn't a way to move, remove CIVIX. There's not really many methods to do it. So, but. I usually play all my videos back on my computer or stream them to my rooms. So this is how you would do it. Now that this is selected, we're going to click our browse button. We're going to go find our movie X folder that I created. Let's scroll down here. Right there. Movie X. Press OK, and then we're just going to press the Start Muxa button. Now I'm going to pause this. It's going to take about four minutes. The original movie size was 45 gigabyte, and we'll see where it ends up after it's done. Okay, so now that it's done, we end up with uh, we could shut this down. We could load our uh, our file. Go to our Blu-ray 3 folder. Select our movie X. And you're going to end up with this structure here. Now this is the structure that can be burned to a Blu-ray ISO to play back in a player. Let's load up our BDM folder. And go to our stream folder. I'm going to right click and select properties and see how much the movie decreased. So just the movie itself was 45 gig with all the trailers and stuff. Just an extraction for a one-to-one -one playback. No compression. It took it down to 16 0.8 gig. This will happen with most movies. Now I can run this through. I'll show you in another video how to compress this down further to end up with a really good uh, uh, ratio of 7,000 divided by 60. I covered that in previous videos. Take this down to like 12 gig and achieve the same results without losing any video quality that you would notice on a 70 inch. Okay, so now that we have the movie, uh, we're going to open it up with MPC. Remember, this has Dolby Atmos and the Screen Pass. And we just extracted the movie when Slysoft could not do it. Okay? Now, remember, Slysoft hasn't come up with an update yet for this movie. And we could be watching this movie weeks before Slysoft fixes it. So let's uh, open it up in MPC. And as you see here, we have our frames zero dropped. The audio and the video is playing good. Let's just take you through different scenes of the movie. There's a selection there. Come over here. Over here. And the credits. So there you go, guys. This will work on, if you turn your amp on, you can pass the 5.1 or, or 6.1 digital track. And this will work with any movie. So thank you for watching. Jack of all trades. And... Uh, Please subscribe, leave a comment, and we are going to take you through four subtitles, uh, MKV. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, get four subtitles to automatically play through MPC. And uh, that's pretty much it. So have a good night.